Welcome. Today we want to present SMCT's Auto Setup Algorithm. It's a plug and play solution for a sensorless motor control. The aim is to get a new unknown motor working with our high performance sensorless control algorithm in the shortest possible time. Additionally, this commissioning must be easy to handle, so it should work out without a special motor workbench and without the need of rotor position feedback delivered by an additional position sensor. We just want to connect the new motor to the inverter and let it spin. So for this demonstration we choose an inverter that delivers up to 1 ampere phase current. This is well suited for the motor under investigation. It's a typical 3-phase gimbal motor. So let's take a look on the graphical user interface. Uh, we go online with the debug tool. Yeah, we are plotting various signals. So uh, the first diagram shows the DQ currents. Uh, second diagram shows the mechanical frequency of the motor. And the third uh, diagram shows the electrical rotor angle. Additionally, we have this um, table here, which shows the identified motor parameters. Um, at the beginning, we have uh, just some random uh, initial values for resistance, inductance, and so on. So to start the auto setup, the user does not need any information about the motor besides its popper number and the maximum allowed phase current. So let's put this information into the GUI. The maximum current is 1 ampere and the popper number for this motor is 7. Um, yeah, so we can start the auto setup procedure by uh, putting these two bits here on high. And um, yeah, first of all, some measurements will be performed to identify the various motor parameters. And additionally, the auto setup will calculate all needed control parameters for the sensorless algorithm and we shall be ready to use the motor in the whole working range, including standstill afterwards. So let's start the procedure and let's take a look at the motor parameters. So you can see that the drive is performing some operations to identify the parameters. Uh, for example, we have a resistance of 5.49 ohms. The inductances are around about 1000 microhenry. Then we have the flux and the inertia of the motor. Okay. Uh, we have finished the auto setup procedure. The control parameters for sensorless operation are set based on the identified motor parameters and the drive is ready for operation. So for the moment we are operating in speed control mode at uh, almost 6 Hz. So let's see if we can uh, go down into the low speed range. Uh, we will change the target frequency to 0.1 one hertz. Okay, the new uh, target speed is reached. You can see that the rotor angle is moving quite uh, quite smooth. Uh, let's take a closer look at the speed. So yeah, we see 0 0.1 hertz. Okay, let's apply some load. So therefore we will get the motor up and uh, break in by hand. So we see we are right now at 0 0.5 ampere, which is 50% of the maximum load. And if we increase the load uh, to one ampere we are at the maximum and the motor has no more torque to speed up the motor and move forward. So he's uh, totally blocked. We can now move the motor a little bit in the forward direction 
in the backward direction. Okay, the control is still very robust. So I will release the load. And he's controlling again the 0 0.1 hertz. So then let's uh, try to uh, reduce further reduce the speed. We go down to 0 0.01 hertz, which is uh, 0 0.6 RPM. Yeah, and we can see the rotor angle is moving uh, slower but still forward. The speed is almost zero. But uh, yeah, we are moving forward. So as you can see, the operation uh, in these low uh, these low speeds is no problem. So we have no restrictions in the capable speed range. Okay, now let's take a look at our sensorless position control feature. For this we will exchange uh, the electrical rotor angle with the mechanical position in revolutions and the target position. So we go online again. You can see the target position is still zero and our current position is uh, somewhere over 600 revolutions. So since we started the auto setup, uh, the mechanical position was tracked. Um, this makes it possible to uh, now go back to the to the initial position, the zero revolutions, when we activate the position controller. So let's do this. Okay, we can see the motor is rotating with uh, the maximum negative frequency. The position is moving back to zero and the rotor should stop at uh, zero revolutions. Okay, the speed is at zero. Position is also at zero. So let's do some uh, position changes. So we move uh, from zero to three revolutions. We take a look at the plots. So this movement was performed quite good. Then we go from three to 2.5. From 2.5 to 2.25, a quarter revolution. Okay, and we go back to zero. Uh, now let's have a look on the control performance for various target positions. So for this we have prepared a positioning cycle. And uh, we can activate it by putting uh, this bit on high. So this will uh, change the target position and uh, our position controller should uh, follow this positioning cycle. So the positioning is done between uh, zero and one revolutions. Yeah, the positioning cycle is uh, performed quite good. Okay, for the last test, we will investigate the maximum dynamics of the drive. Therefore, we will go back to the torque control mode. So we deactivate the frequency controller and the position controller. And now we can uh, give a target uh, Q current. 
So with one ampere Q current, we will get the fastest acceleration up to the maximum frequency. Let's do this. So the Q current here, put it to one. Okay, and we see the speed we're going to the maximum. And then we, we release the torque again and the speed should move back to zero. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching.